Hello and welcome to episode 87 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is March 8th, 2021. Today I'm wearing two fairly old pieces. One was knitted by me, the red um, pullover or tunic or dress or whatever was knit by myself. But this vest was knit by my sister and um, yeah. I think I will have to stand up on my chair again to show off both pieces as they are both fairly long. Um, yeah, so as you can see, the vest is really very, very simple. And um, the yarn my sister used was a yarn that we used to have in the shop where I used to work. And it was a huge ball of, um, I think it was a mohair acrylic mix or something like that and um, could have been 200 gram ball something like that and I wanted to show um, what you could make with one ball of yarn and I wanted to give a very simple example of, of a vest of a garment that you could make even as a beginner so I asked my sister to cast on a certain number of stitches I think it was 50 I um, calculated how many stitches she would need so it'd be wide enough. I think I was aiming for 50 centimeters. And then basically I asked her to, to just knit and garter stitch until she almost um, finished up half the yarn. So, and then to split it into two halves. And then, um, so she would just knit on one half of the stitches to the front and then she would take the other half of the stitches and knit to the front and to make the fronts a bit longer than the back because the um, there's no neck shaping so I knew that the point where um, the two fronts split had to be like behind the neck it couldn't just be half otherwise the fronts would be too too short so she made the fronts rather long so if I wear it the way that the fronts and backs are the same length um, that point sort of slips a bit to the back which I think is okay and then she cast the stitches off and all I did was sew two very short seams at the sides I think that um, garter stitch is very easy to to sew together and I think it's even hard to tell which is the outside and inside of the seam and I de deliberately did very big armholes so that I could throw this on on top of whatever I was wearing and I um, didn't seam it to the um, bottom so that would be wide enough to again to wear over whatever else I was wearing and um, the funny thing was that my sister knit and knit and knit and then at some point she said well I'm still quite far away from half of the yarn but it's so long and you're not that big <laughs> not that tall um so I looked at it I measured it and I said yeah you're right it's long enough you can split it into um, two halves and knit the fronts and I think we only knew, used about um three quarters of the yarn that was in that one ball um yeah but it was quite impressive to see how much um, knitting you could get out of one of those balls of yarn and it's a very simple pattern so I think it's a perfect first garment if you want to knit something like that and because it's knitting garter stitch it won't roll the the edges will lie flat you don't need any um, any kind of uh, finishing or ribbing or anything and what I like to do is I like to just put a needle like this in to hold it together but I could also wear it open if I'm just throwing it over quickly because I'm just a little bit cold and it's easy to take off and put on again yeah so that's what she made for me so there's no Ravelry page for that I never wrote down the pattern um, because it's so simple and you can knit it with any yarn you just need to make a gauge swatch to figure out how many stitches you need for whatever width you're aiming for and then you just get, go as high as you want split it into two knit the two halves two little seams very very simple yeah and the um, pullover I'm wearing that's that's a mohair yarn that we used to sell it at Wollerödel um, and it's a tunic that's knit bottom up and it has it's not a raglan but it's it has this um, round yoke um, yeah so you can you can see the decreases quite clearly um, 
The, the mohair yarn was knit at a very loose gauge. So I think basically the yarn called for like four to five millimeter needle and I knit it on an eight millimeter needle and you could knit the same pattern with a nine millimeter needle and get the bigger size. So that is quite a fun way of doing that. And um, yeah, I've had it for many years. As you can see, it's not quite as, as pretty as it used to be, but I still like it. And um, I'm a very big fan of mohair. I know not everybody can wear it, but I like it. It's very lightweight. It's still warm and um, I love it very much. Yeah, so that's the two things I'm wearing today. Now on to my one finished object. I have one finished object today and that's my safari mittens, my alternate um, rebellion mittens. mittens. So rebellion means I did not knit exactly the way the pattern called for. I did follow the pattern in that I made two different ones. So the first one that you've already seen has the giraffes on it and they determined how long the mitten was going to be. And then I looked at the um, chart for the elephants and I realized there's so little compared to the giraffe. I have to knit quite a few elephants um, to get the same height. So instead of doing elephants in a different pattern, I thought it'd be fun to have three rows of elephants. Um, so there are three elephants next to each other and on top of each other. And there are four giraffes next to each other, but only one giraffe in height. <laughs> yeah, um, the green yarn is the Opal Beauty yarn. I'll show you the skein a little bit later. Um, and I left the mitten open on top because that's the way I like to wear the mittens in case I keep them still not sure um, yeah with the first one I tried to follow one of the patterns for the thumb gusset of the book with the second I just alternated the the two colors and these are the rows where there's no um, color work um, so that makes it look a bit funny but that one looks funny too so they kind of match <laughs> And uh, yeah, and I think they're really funny. I, I love the way um, the, yeah, there's so many more elephants than giraffes. And uh, I like the way they have different colors, but because the green is the same, they very obviously belong together. Um, I was kind of thinking it'd be fun to have another one, another green mitten with yet another animal on it in a different color. And then you could mix and match which two to wear. Um, it's one of the crazy ideas that I have. I probably will never get around to doing that. But um, especially for kids, it'd be fun to do that. And maybe that would help them to um, look after them and not lose them. <laughs> yeah, so that's um, my mittens. And um, I'm very happy with them. Okay, then on to works in progress. I will start, as usual, with my socks. And I will show them to you in the order that I cast them on. So the oldest pair of socks I'm working on are the longitudinal socks that I'm knitting as a donation for women with ovarian cancer. And uh, I had the second sock on hold for a while, but since receiving a new knitting needle last week, I could go on knitting it. And as you can see, um, I think I was still doing the increases last week. And I have finished, oops, this is the side, I finished the increases. These are the increases for the heel and these are the increases for the toe. So I finished the increases, I did the rows without, half the rows without the increases and I did the two rows in orange that will run down the middle of the sock. So um, with this one you can see quite nicely, so they run on top of the foot and then they go down the middle of the sole, the middle of the heel and up to the cuff again. And so the orange line proves that I have finished half the sock, but only I think two rows after that. So I'm still in um, finishing the bit that has no increases or decreases. And once I finish those rows, um, I will start the decreases. And then in the end, I will graph the two halves together. Of the two parts. Yeah, so that's the longitudinal socks. This is all I have left from my ball of yarn and I know it's not going to be enough 
but I got um, somebody else's left over in that color so I can finish these socks. Then the next pair of socks I cast on were the um, a little bit structure socks. I tested the pattern for Elke and I showed you the finished sock last week and um, I finished the leg part of the second sock. So I didn't add a lot of that. I changed to a different needle just for fun because that's another new needle that I got. Um, I thought it'd be fun to, to use that. And, um, and I like to mix things up for my hands. So I was using double pointed um, needles on that sock and I knew I was going to use double points for the sock madness sock. So um, I switched that out just in case I was going to need this needle size, which I didn't, but I'll talk about that in a minute. So that's a, a little bit structured. The pattern is fairly new on Ravelry. It was released uh, about one and a half weeks ago, but it's available now and I link to it on my Ravelry page in case you want to knit the same pattern. Then the next sock I started was the was one of the warm up patterns for the sock madness. And um, that's that pattern, Cocky Neil, I think is what it's called. And again, I did not do a lot on that um, sock. Um, all I knit was the, the few more rounds uh, without pattern before the heel increases start. And I have started the heel increases, um, but only a few rounds. So the, this is the beginning of the heel increases. And then, um, so I'll keep increasing until I reach the um, number of stitches I need. I can show you on the finished sock. So this is the way the heel looks. You increase, you knit this pattern that's like the um, ribbing pattern. It's like the ribbing pattern up here. So with this sock, the the ribbing and the pattern in the heel will match. With the first one, it didn't because I didn't see um, the corrections for the pattern. And after the increases are done, um, you knit the heel turn, I think is what it's called. That's that bit. And then the foot. But no hurry with these socks um, because the, they, these are just warm up socks. I don't have a deadline or anything and I can just knit on them leisurely <laughs> whenever I feel like it. But then the sock madness itself. And last Monday I told you that um, I expected it to start last Monday. And that's because I have no idea how things work because it's the first time I'm taking part in the sock madness. And now I've learned that um, from March 1st, things can start to happen, but they don't have to start happening. And it seems that this year, many people still signed up the last few days of February, which means the uh, moderators and um, people responsible had a lot of work to do um, getting things organized. So it took until Thursday, uh, our time, it was about around lunchtime, I think, that the specifications were announced. So we knew that we were going to need one color of yarn and we needed four millimeter beads. So we could pick what we wanted to use. So I picked two different colors of yarn with corresponding beads that would be easy to see and that look nice together. And then from the moment the specifications are announced, it takes between one second and 48 hours for the patterns to actually get to us. And this time I think um, they didn't use up the whole 48 hours, but I think it was more than 40 hours afterwards that we finally did get the pattern. And the pattern is called um, Senbon Sakura, which I think means something like a thousand cherry trees or cherry blossoms, something like that. And um, once I saw the pattern, I decided to use different yarn from what I had chosen before. And what I ended up doing is um, using the same green yarn that I use for my mittens. Because the, the pattern looks a bit like flowers, it would have been nice to use either pink or red or something like that, but I didn't have anything on hand that um, I could have used 
which would have shown the pattern and everything, but I still had this yarn at home from knitting the, the mittens, and I had some very nice purpley or reddish, or yeah, it's a mix of red and purple um, beads at home that I could use, so I decided to use this yarn. And this is what my first sock looks like. So it's um, it's a very nice pattern with these um, flower-like stitch pattern. And um, with the, so this is the qualifying pattern. It's not um, actually part of the competition itself, but it's, it's the um, qualifying pattern. So what that means is that we have two weeks time to knit this pattern exactly look exactly the way it is written with the minimum amount of um, stitches and rows so the pattern has three different stitch counts the minimum stitch count is actually the smallest stitch counts with count which is what i am using and then we have to have at least one pattern repeat here then we have to do the heel and then we have to have one and a half pattern repeats plus something for the foot and then the toe and we have to have at least six beads per sock so those three and those three beads are the minimum requirement and these beads are um, I put in extra so I wouldn't have had to use these beads but I really like the way they look inside the, the flower but as you can see this was not a requirement I didn't put the bead in here and I did not put a bead here because I thought in case you wear a shoe it might this might have been okay but I was a bit worried that this would be uncomfortable and um, but I think on top of the foot depending on what kind of shoe you wear um, it might be uncomfortable, but then, yeah, you don't have to wear them in shoes, you can wear them at home. And I'm probably going to donate those socks again, because this is a green yarn, and I like to knit socks for um, this um, organization for women with cancer. And I thought, especially if they're sick, they might like to wear them in bed, maybe in hospital. And it'd be just great for them to have something really nice to look at. That is also warm and and green and um, so i decided to to put beads in all the flowers that i put on top of the foot and just leave those two back here without beads yeah the heel construction is a bit similar to the one that i just showed you with the increases but then the increases are in pattern so it's actually quite different from the other sock then there's a heel turn the heel turn again is different from the other sock because you um, not only, well, you do have the, 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 sh the kind of short rows, but you also have decreases in the middle of the sole. So that's a really interesting um, construction. They fit quite well. I really like the pattern. Maybe I will knit it again for myself. Um, or maybe I'll just keep these. I don't know yet. <laughs> no, I want to donate them. I, I might knit them again in a different color for myself. Yeah. So that's the first sock. For the second sock, the flowers have to be mirrored. So it's, um, they have to be, I have to knit two different socks basically, but it's just switching around those charts. And um, I have to have them finished by next week, Saturday, which I think is, uh, is more than enough time, considering that I've already finished half of the first sock. I hope to finish, to show you this pair is a finished object next Monday. Um, yeah, and I hope I got everything right so that I will be qualified to be on a team. And then sometime, not next week, but the week after, or maybe the weekend, I don't know, at some point the first um, um, competition round will start. And I'm Yep, already looking forward to seeing that. I must say, I, I love the pattern. From what I've seen of, of Sock Madness patterns before, some are really very crazy and, and weird. So, um, yeah, but this one I think is just beautiful. It's, it's very beautiful. It's not really very difficult, but you have to follow the pattern very closely. The pattern will be available after the Sock Madness is over. There's already um, a page so the pattern page is already there on Ravelry. I linked to it on my page so you can have a look at that. 
and um, as soon as the sock madness is over you can get the pattern if you want to yeah so that's I think very exciting um, and yeah I look forward to finishing that sock and doing the second one so that's one of the priorities um, at the moment yeah that's all the socks I am knitting no mittens at the moment even though I have a pair of wrist warmers planned that I might start this week we'll see I have one more little sock yarn project and that's the strider cowl that I'm knitting in this beautiful blue um, beauty opal yarn um, very very soft very nice to work with didn't put a lot of work in but I finished the first pattern repeat so I think last week I had like half a repeat now I have a full repeat and I've started the the second repeat of the pattern did I Oh, I'm a bit confused right now. I'm not quite sure whether I haven't finished the full repeat and this should be closed. Oh no, the closing is part of the of that half. Yeah, so the first pattern repeat is complete. I'm working on the second pattern repeat. Um, yeah, I'll find out where I am at some point when I continue knitting on it. I still like to look forward to having it. Um, I have continued knitting on the test shawl I am knitting the um, morning dew shawl by Sarah knit and this is what it looks like now and um, yeah I think the deadline is approaching I have to see to it that I get this done this will probably be my number one priority once the socks are finished um, and I'm still not quite sure how to measure the length of the shawl up here, but I think the one and a half meters is like a minimum requirement. And it's probably not a problem if I make it bigger as long as I make the deadline. Um, so I'll see what I'll do there. Um, yeah, look forward to wearing this. If I keep it, another thing I'm not quite sure whether I'm going to keep it or give it away, but it feels really, really soft. It's not my usual color. But um, I really like it and I think it goes really well with this leafy pattern. Yeah, so this needs to grow. And then I have a new cast on. Do you say cast on if it's crochet? I started something new and that's a bit crazy, I know. But the thing is, I was waiting for the pattern for the sock manners to drop and it didn't. And I was on... Instagram and I was um, and I saw a post by Heather from HG Designs Crochet and um, some of you may remember that I test crocheted a crochet dress a gray square dress last summer and I really enjoyed that and I really really like her designs and she was looking for testers for a jumper so in the middle or at the start of sock madness I decide to crochet an oversized sweater in three weeks <laughs> well, but then I thought that, well, um, the first two of those weeks will be the qualifying pattern. And then when the first round comes, I'll just put it aside for the couple of days I need to finish my socks. And then I can, I can try and finish the sweater. And one of the reasons I decided to do this, even though I wasn't quite sure I had enough time, is that I'm crocheting with a fairly big needle because it calls for two yarns held double and what Heather did is she used scraps in DK weight yarn and then a four ply um, black yarn and I just love the look of that and I do have DK weight scraps but I'm using them for the blanket I, we are knitting in my knit along so I didn't want to use those for the jumper so I looked at the yarn I have here in my shop and I decided to use this yarn so it's one of the rainforest colors that Opal does every year. And um, if you look at the sock, at the picture of the sock, these are fairly small stripes. So that means that the all the colors in this yarn um, have fairly short stripes in the yarn. So I thought if I crochet that, um, it might kind of look 
as if I was using scraps because it's so many colors and each color doesn't um, carry for very long. And this is what the jumper looks like so far. And I must say, I really love it. Um, so as I thought, every bit of color is not, doesn't carry through very long. Sometimes the same color will come on top of each other. Then it's a like a tiny little block of color. But I don't think it's too bad. That could happen with scraps. If you have scraps that have sort of the same colors. And um, yeah, I really like it. It's not as oversized as she asks for. But then she says we can decide how much ease we want in the pullover. So instead of crocheting size 3 the way I did with the crochet dress, I decided to do size 2. So it's still a bit loose on me, but not quite as big. Um, yeah, and this is either the front or the back. Um, usually I like to do sweaters in the round so I don't have to seam so much. But with this jumper she does it in pieces so that... Um, we won't sew them together, but we will crochet them together and we'll crochet them together just with the black yarn held double. Um, so we have these nice visible black lines running around, um, I think the shoulder, the side and the armhole. The arms themselves will be crocheted round, which I think is great because I don't care for the seam down the arm. And um, yeah, and I can't wait to finish this. Um, as I said, I have three weeks time, so um, should be enough time to work on my sock madness and a few other things as well. But um, yeah, I really like the way this looks and can't wait to finish it and um, to have that jumper. I'm already planning on, or not planning, but I've, um, yeah, took quite a while to look at all my yarn, all the yarn back there and over there, over there's the DK weight yarn. And uh, I could imagine making the same jumper in another color combination again and again, and maybe again. <laughs> so that's the only new thing I started last week. And that brings us to the two blankets I'm working on. Uh, unfortunately, I did not crochet a lot on the dinosaur blanket. I did finish all the horns that are going onto the three faces I had crocheted last week. I did all the mouths or beaks and I sewed them on, but that's all I managed to do. So next I want to do the eyes, crochet the eyes, sew them on, and then I will have to, I will first crochet the, the edge that goes around the faces because I realized um, the horns when I sew them on, um, they are a bit longer than the face itself, so I have to sew them onto the edge. So I have to crochet that first. But this is basically what it's going to look like. Um, so the eyes will be here, over the mouth or beak, and then one horn here, one here, and one there. And then we have our little triceratops. Yeah, so I'm not too happy that I didn't get more done on that, but that's the way things happen. <laughs> <laughs> I did manage to um, do my one square on my optic blanket. That's the knit along I'm hosting over on my Ravelry group. And um, <clears throat> I decided to knit one square um, of the optic blanket every week. And I calculated with the number of squares I was planning to do that I will have the blanket done by the end of the year. And instead of knitting all the pieces together, um, I'm going to knit nine squares onto each other. Is that how you say it? And then I'll start the next square. And then in the end, I will have six squares consisting of nine squares. If that makes sense. And then I'll sew those six pieces together. And so the square I'm working on at the moment looks like this. And this is the square I knit last week. This is not opal yarn. Or is it? Oh, I forgot. It could be regia or could be opal. It's a it's fairly old um, yarn from my stash. Uh, I think I just knit kids mittens with it. So it 
almost all the yarn is still there so it looks like almost looks like a full ball of yarn but it isn't and now I've put this color in here I really like the different blues in this yarn and I think it looks nice together yeah so that's everything I knit and crocheted last week um, I'm happy I got more done than just a pair of socks um, because the pattern came out so late but that's the reason I didn't finish the socks yet but as it's a qualifying round it's okay and um, the qualifying or the time for the qualifying runs this week and next week so this week I should be able to work on as many projects as possible um, I didn't show you the blue mohair jumper because I didn't work on it at all so um, yeah maybe I can start one of the sleeves on that one um, but we'll see I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I will see you in the next one bye